Hi, I'm Callum from Time Valley Motorhomes and today I'm going to be showing you the Auto Trail Scout which is a 2020 model. To hook the vehicle up, if you just use your foot and lift this wet locker up in here you've got your two leisure batteries and you've got your main hook up point. So to hook the vehicle up, pull the collar back and slide it on and then to slide off Pull the lever back and slide off. You've also got your two main battery fuses here and your grey wastewater here. So to open, use the lever on the side. Normally you drive over a grid on the way out of your campsite and dispose of your grey waste. In the winter you don't want to leave any water in the van so let all out, out of the grey waste and the fresh which I'll show you and the boiler which I'll show you from inside. Further back. You've got your toilet, so this is where you do your business, this is where your business ends up. And if you use your little key, you can open your lock. And as long as the slide is shut on the inside of the toilet, you'll be able to lift the cassette out like so. You've got wheels to drag it around the site instead of carrying it. And empty if you take the cap off. Go to your waste disposal point, press the button on the back and tip it out. This will stop the glugging and give it a bit of air. And then there's normally a tap. Put some water in, give it a slosh around, give it a final tip out before you either give it a cap full of liquid or you put a pint of water in and use the tablets which are like dishwasher tablets and cellophane. And what you do is put a pint full of water back in the cassette, push it back in and drop one straight down the toilet. Next week you've got your fresh water intake, so put the hose into the grooves here and fill it until it overflows or fill it until you can see inside your levels, so it'll go up in increments of 25, 50, 75 and 100 on the main control panel. If you are going wild camping you will have to take a full tank of water with you, if you're not just take a maximum of 20 litres to stop off and use the toilet and have a cup of tea. But if you couldn't fill up from a hose you, you have got a pump on board which is called the super flow whale pump and it connects here and you can put it into a bucket and then put the other end into the tap and it will um, pump, pump the water into the vehicle on here you've got your external shower so inside will be a, 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 a hose fitting this side and a trigger gun it's a cold water feed so it's great for the dogs the bikes the boots the kids and then on the skirt here you've got your fresh water drain tap so when you've so say you've got a full tank of water you'll not want to be traveling with a full tank of water because it will um really use more diesel of the van so you just open up on the way out of a site over a grid or a gully in the ground and drain your water off the back of the vehicle which opens with your round key again same one you open your toilet and all your external lockers with got your garage area so in here you've got some tethering points to tie things down and you've got a good amount of storage coming around the back of the vehicle so the same key the round key you can put in here lift this cover off there's a big nut and then this lifts off reveals your full size spare wheel you've got your high level brake light and reverse camera the other side is just another bit of your garage and then you do have your awning, your boiler flue, which you don't need to do anything with, and your external gas outlet point, so you've got a spigot there, so if you cut that off, and then you get some gas hose and two jubilee clips tied to this jubilee clip, the spigot onto the pipe for this end, and jubilee clip it onto your Kadak or your external gas barbecue point, you will be able to use the gas on board to power your barbecue instead of carrying a separate bottle. You've got your fridge vents there and then to operate your gas locker so your liquid your LPG liquid petroleum gas there is a lever just behind the driver's seat here passenger seat and then you fit two 11 kilogram gas bottles on here so it's a left hand thread and then nip up with this adjustable spanner so go and get one of these if you haven't already nip it up and then press this green button for three seconds to allow the gas through 
and then turn on at the top of the bottle. Only turn one full turn because if there was any problems with the gas, it's quicker to turn off than doing multiple turns and then tie them in and turn it off at the top of the bottle when you are traveling. In front of that, you've got your diesel. So your main ignition key opens your diesel and you've got your add blue, which is a 20 litre tank. You can get this from most fuel stations now as it's a requirement on most diesel Euro 6 engines. It will tell you on the dash once it needs it and it'll give you a mileage countdown until basically the engine won't start. So keep an eye on that. And then on the slam panel here, you've got your tyre pressures. So five and a half bar front and back, which is equivalent to 79.5 PSI. Underneath your passenger seat, you've got your tool kit. So the tool kit here has your jack and a bracing and a tow knife and a screwdriver. So everything you need, if you break down, have to be towed away or to change your wheel. And to open your bonnet, it's on the main, it's on the side of the dashboard and your engine battery lives underneath the floor with it being a fate. So if you did need to change it, that's where you get access to it. Underneath the bonnet, so your secondary catch is just above the auto trail badge. You've got your weight plate here, so auto trail weight plate. So this vehicle's rated at four and a half ton. If you weight it to anything, you can tow up to a train weight of six ton. You've got your front and back axle weights. You've got your paint coat for your grigio aluminium silver colour. You've got your brake fluid, radiator fluid, and the main one you're going to need is your screen wash when you're out about on the road. You've got your oil filler cap here and your dipstick further down and then you've got your earth for giving or receiving a jump start and your positive here so this cap would normally be over it you just pop that down lift it up you can give a jump start from your your positive there as the engine battery is located underneath the floor Once inside the vehicle, you've got a master switch here on your main touchscreen's control panel, which will either give you two 30 volts if you are hooked up or 12 volts if you want, and you'll be solely running off your leisure battery. Across from this, you've got your main light switch at the top, and then coming down, you've got your owner light, which is above your habitation door. And then if you press and hold this switch here, it dims the light in your kitchen area, which you can set the dimmer on the settings. Underneath your master switch you've got your pump, so this services your tap, your toilet, your shower, your exterior shower and then below you've got your levels, so you've got 75 litres of water on at the moment and zero waste and then coming down here this is your battery levels at the bottom so you've got 13.9 volts in your leisure battery we are hooked up at the moment so once it was taken out we'll give a true reading you've got 11.8 volts in your battery uh, engine battery you've got the current coming off the active battery which is the leisure so this is what we're using at the minute 8.7 amp and then you've got the main current current coming in which is 5.3 amp and you've got your solar current which is 0.1 the solar will go to sleep when the main current the you are hooked up because you are bringing in a bigger source of electric and then if you go to your settings you can select your active battery i would always leave it on leisure and never put on smart or vehicle because if it crosses over to the vehicle you could then flatten your engine battery and you'd have to require the AA or the breakdown cover company to come out and jump start you. Your vehicle bat your solar battery should always be on vehicle or smart because smart will assess both batteries and give the solar charge to which one requires it the most. So this is great if the vehicle is in storage for any length of time or sitting. You've got your tank fill, so you must put your tank fill on to operate your submersible pump from your filler point, which I've shown you from outside. And you do have your tank heater, so if it's going to be a cold night, put your tank heaters on. It'll stop your water freezing in your tanks that are under slung on the chassis. You've got your lighting setting, so this is your dimmer, so this helps your dimmer switch dim. You've got your screen settings, and then you can set your time and your date. Across from this you've got your Aldi heating system, so if you press and hold the on button 
you can turn it off and then you can turn it on like so and once you get the screen if you press menu you can select the temperature of the vehicle at the top all the way to 30 degrees you can set your water from off so if you've got no water on board and you're just using it for heating and um, don't put the hot water on but you can have it on as half or full and then you've got your sources you're running off so you've got electrics you've got one kilowatt two kilowatts and three kilowatts and then you do have your gas so if you are well camping you just have to use gas but if you wanted hot water heating quicker you can put your sources on together so you can give it a boost of either electric and gas together but if you wanted to prioritize one or the other to give it a boost either turn the heating off and leave the water on which will mean the water heats up quicker or put the heat turn the water off and put the heating on and the van will heat up quicker you can then go into the, the settings further and program um, a timer and other bits and pieces which are explained in your handbook but that is just the basics on how to operate your Aldi heating system in the locker behind your driver's seat so your overhead locker you've got your electric power supply unit so on this side you've got your main trips so should your hairdryer or kettle trip the van check here first before you check your site above you've got your charger switch when on 230 electric and your heating so these must be on this will charge your leisure and vehicle battery when hooked up and this will use your heating and hot water if this switch isn't on you'll have no power to your Aldi heating um, panel and then in here you've got all your 12 volt fuses which are all listed up on the door here so should you need any um, fuses it will tell you what they are so it is a good idea to go and buy some spare blade fuses and carry them with you because if a fuse does blow you can fix your problem when away you've got your build, build number here so should you ever need a warranty claim or a part for the vehicle if you quote this number um, we'll then quote it to Auto Trail and we'll know what the vehicle was when it was built and what spec it is and you've also got um, about your Thatcham Cat 6 tracker which is a £95 subscription Above you've got your large hecky roof light, so open if you take the tabs on the windows off here and then you can use the winder and wind the window up to open it. When travelling please ensure all your windows and skylights are closed because they're not meant to be open when in transit. And then at the front you've got a fly screen and a blackout blind. Your bed at the top, this pulls forward and your mattress, once it's out of the cellophane, will fold over and the ladder can clip on here. There will be a bit of fabric where this bar goes through and clips on just on the bulkhead so if you've got young children up there it will stop them falling out during the night. Coming to your kitchen, so you've got your Three gas rings, and one electric, which is here. Um, if you've had these on for any length of time, do let it cool before you put the lid down. And then you have got your grill. So your grill. So you may have to hold the knob in for. Um, a short while just to get the thermocouple warm before releasing but do take your oven shelves and grill pans out when traveling as these can cause noise when on the road and then you have got your your oven which lights like so and below you've got your main plug for your um, electric hot plate so should anything be wrong with the hot plate you can isolate it here instead of isolating your mains electric storage in here with your pull out three drawer and storage in there that pipe there is just for your um, Aldi heating and above you've got your Plates, bowls and cup rack storage, you've got your winter covers which slide behind your 
and fridge vents which coming back to the back of the vehicle you've got your fridge so to operate your fridge press and hold the button on your Bedford fridge you've got A which stands for automatic so if you leave it on automatic if I was to then take the hookup out it would switch over to gas if gas was to be gas bottle was to be open if not it would then switch on to the 12 volt setting if the engine was to be started if you did want to override it you can like so so there I put it on the battery it's come up with a code 6 fault it's because the engine is not running at the moment or you can just set it on the gas but I would leave it on automatic the idea with the 12 volt is to cool the fridge the night before you go away so should you keep the van at home or you've got a storage yard with hook up hook the van up the night before put your shopping in allow it to go nice and cool overnight and then when you do start to drive the fridge will stay at the same temperature it was when departing and won't get any warmer or colder and then you have got your temperature there and then this button here basically puts a little bit of heat around the Round here stops the rubbers from sticking and you have got your fridge above the fridge so if you push this in you've got your microwave which is a 240 microwave and just works like a normal household microwave and then you've got your, your wardrobe so in your wardrobe here you've got your Aldi um, tank this holds um, antifreeze so when it's on it will show a lot higher than when it's off so when it's off it'll probably show a minimum and you'll want to top it up don't top it up until you pour it on because then it will show what level is really in that tank below you've got your storage this pipe here is just a waste hose extension so it clips, clips onto the waist so if you can't get close enough to the grid or the hole in the ground you can clip that on and use the pipe to drain the waste where you want it to go and then you've just got more storage in the drawers and a storage cupboard under here which is just over the wheel arch so you can use put your bits and pieces in there once inside the bathroom to operate your toilet Simply press the blue button on the back, make sure the pump's on and you get flush. Once you've got your flush to open your trap door, slide to the right and it will deposit your waste into the cassette. If this is open, when you try to get the cassette out, it won't the cassette won't come out the exterior. So make sure it is shut. And on the back the diagram the wheel will go red once the cassette is indicating that it needs to come out and be changed. You've got your light for your bathroom on the side of your toilet cupboard. And operate the skylight if you push in and slide along. Or you put it in the grooves should it be a nice day and you want a bit of ventilation. And you do have your blackout and your fly screen. In the shower area, so if you push your doors, they're just magnetic. You've got a towel rail. So this is where you can hang your towels should they be wet or your coats if you've been caught in the rain because it as this is the smallest place in the van it gets lovely and warm but underneath the passenger side rear bench seat you do have your main drain tap so in here this is your main drain for your for your boiler so this boiler holds 10 litres of water at any one time in the winter you don't want it to freeze as it's not covered under warranty as it's your responsibility to drain the water off. So to do so, come in with the pump off and lift this tap up and the water will cascade underneath the chassis. Come in with no power on, no pump on and the water won't be pushed back into the boiler. When coming to reuse the van, put the tap down, fill it up and then you're good to go. But when, when you are winterizing, open that tap, open your fresh, open your uh, waste on the outside of the vehicle, open all your mixer taps inside the vehicle to the middle position just to stop any airlock. And then when you do come to reuse it, you shouldn't have any problems. You've got storage underneath here, and then it'll make the bed at the back. You simply pull, pull the bed towards each other, drop the leg, 
So we'll do that on both sides and use the back the backrest in the middle. We'll turn them all upside down as you'll get a flat side on the back and it's far comfortable to, sit, to sleep on than have the bull nose in the ribs of the leather upholstery. Behind your driver's seat you have a fan assist you have an assisted fan here for your Audi heating system with a small rocker switch. So you can turn it up to full power or down to half power and this will push the heat from your when your Audi heating system is on into the cab to keep the cab warm and stop your windows from misting up. Now in your cab I will go through all the cab controls. So on the driver's door you've got your electric windows and your electric mirror adjustments for your top and your blind spot at the bottom. You've got your handbrake to your right. That beeping in the background is just telling us that it's a vi it's an audible warning to tell us not to drive off as we have the hook up in the vehicle. You've got your rear fogs, your it's got stop start on the new Euro 60 engines for the 2020 models. So if you press this button, it disconnects the stop start. You've got your rear fogs and you've got your headlight adjustment. On your wiper stalk, you've also got your trip. So it'll run through this computer in the middle here. And it'll show you your range, your distance, your average consumption, your speed, and so on. Coming down here, you've got your cruise and speed control, speed limit and cruise control. You've got your lights and your indicators. You've got your volume and your mute button. Your hands free, which will scroll through your contacts, your radio channels, or your tracks on your CD. With it being the new 9-speed Fiat Automatic, you have got a park on this gearbox. And then you've got drive mode, so if you press drive mode on here, which is this little button here, it'll go through the screen there near the park. You've got power, you've got eco, and you've got normal. But if you just do leave it on normal, and if you do want power to intervene, just put your foot flat to the floor, it'll drop a gear and it'll give you a bit more power, but you can have it in the power sitting if you want to just give you that little bit more power when running. You've got this button down here which is your traction control disconnect and your hill your hill descent control with it being an automatic you put that on if you're going down a steep slope this locks all the doors so your two cab doors your habitation door and also takes your step in and then you do have your heated mirrors and obviously your, your hazard lights you've got a USB for charging and a 12 volt for charging your other USB for the radio is located in this top cool box, which is here. And then you do have your glove box, cab, lines on both passenger and driver side, cab windows, and of course you do have your black outlines on the main windscreen. Coming down to your temperature control, so this is climate control, so you've got your temperature, hot or cold, fan speed 1 to 4, 4 being the, de the demistance setting, and then you've got aircon, so it must be on, on at least one or more for the aircon to work, and it will cool the box at the top of the dash, so if you do have anything for the raw chocolate sweet, you can put them in there, should you have it on a colder setting, instead of putting them in the fridge, then you've got your distribution, and your circulation. This is the new Xcent head unit on Auto Trail models, which has got Motorhome Pacific sat nav in. So once it does load, to so turn off and on here, and then you do have you've got your home screen there. So you've got navigation. navigation there which are loads so we'll just ask you if you to set it up and 
something like so and then once it loads you can put in your destination things don't set the go home setting because if someone steals your motorhome they know where you live so just put it to the street or the estate where you live and not your exact house address and then obviously it knows your vehicle your remote home yeah would have been a frontier model that we're currently recording on it's over three and a half ton if it was anything else it would be under three and a half and then finish and then if you click the, the three dots in the corner you click a new route you can do multiple routes so if you want to divert past somewhere say a fuel station or a camping shop on your way to your site you can put your camping which is your campsite and then scroll along underneath you've got your tuner so this can either be FM or DAB but it's got the setting where if it loses the FM it will kick on to if it loses the DAB it will kick over to the FM so it's got the link in You've got your FM tuner, your DAB tuner, your camera, which you can have on when travelling, as long as you, but you, but it won't stay on permanently because you can turn it off to get into your radio and your sat nav. Because if it was on permanently, you wouldn't be able to do that. But you can do that there by just clicking cam. And obviously, you've got your shortcut buttons, your navigation. And then you have your disc and your USB should you have anything in your iPod illuminate once you've got USB in and you do have your Bluetooth sort of pair you just find BT on your smartphone and then make sure the pins match and it'll come up pair on there and it'll come up pair on here it will connect your phone and then it'll ask you if you want to sync your contacts just press yes and then you can use your bluetooth for answer for your hands free and your bluetooth streaming if you have music on your device also on your head unit you've got this little sd card here in the middle so if you just push that in this is your um, card for your maps so your sat navs that must be in and there's a little chip in the end of the card here so should you want to update the maps in a couple of years time you can do so